process or piping and instrumentation diagram. In this video, I will share with you five things that chemical process engineers must know about PNIDs. My name is Jefferson Costa. I'm a chemical process engineer with expertise in plant design and responsible for the in-process booster training program. Today, let's discuss at least five topics. What is PNID? What the differences between PNID and UFD? Can the PNID be used for plant erection? Heat and material balance should be shown in, on the PNID. And should chemical process engineers learn how to draw PNID? So stay with me up to the end and you'll find the answers or my point of view for all of these questions. And let's start with what is a PNID? In simple terms, the PNID is a 2D drawing representing a industrial plant. It can be named process and instrumentation diagram. I don't like this designation, but I know some co companies that use that. But most often it is named or uh, known as piping and instrumentation diagram. And I prefer this name because the main reason for the piping instrumentation diagram is to show to the engineering team, to the design department, all the materials, pipe size, instrumentation, electrical issues, and other information required to develop and issue all the engineering documentations for the plant erection, startup, commissioning, and etc. Based on that, you must understand that the PNID is not a document exclusively for the process engineering department. It is a multidisciplinary document where, in many cases, it starts with the process engineer, but in some companies, it is responsibility of the automation engineer. And once the, the project go forward, more disciplines add comments and add information to this document. So if I need to install a pump in an industrial plant, before being able to install that plant, that pump at the site, at the field for real, I need to prepare some documentation. And one of the documentations needed for that is the piping and instrumentation diagram, where we will see the line is going in, the line is going out, the line size, if it is two inches, three inches, or other size for the, the line, we'll see which are the material considered for that line. It is carbon steel, stainless steel, or other kind of uh, material. We'll see also the fittings that are, must be installed in the pump, the is isolation valve at the suction, the isolation valve at the discharge, the manometer at the discharge of the pump, the check valve, and others instrumentation that can apply to the arrangement. And we'll see also information related to the automation, how the, plant, the pump starts, how the pump stops, and etc. So the PNID is one of the most import, important documents in a plan design. And without it, it's not possible to, to issue or to develop others, others uh, documentation that is very, very important to plan design. Usually, the PNID is classified or organized in areas or sessions, and that leads to the following question. What is the differences between PNID and UFD? or you can have other nomenclatures for utility flow diagram. And the truth is that they are quite the same. The main differences is that when we talk about the piping instrumentation diagram, most often we are talking about the main process. If I installing a hydrogen plant, I'm talking about from the natural gas going in up to the hydrogen going out. Or if I'm talking about a refinery, I'm talking about the, the flow or the process of the natural gas or the process of the petroleum to be refined. However, to be able to produce 
the products that are desired based on refining, uh, reforming of uh, natural gas or liquefaction of CO2, we need utilities. Utilities are streams of fluids that are needed to produce the product, but they don't have straight contact with the process. For instance, to produce polypropylene, I need a cooling system to decrease the temperature of the reactor, of the polypropylene reactor. And the water used to do this cooling, it do not take part of the reaction. However, without this cooling system, without the cooling water, are not able to control the temperature of the process and that can lead to a runaway and an accident in the industrial facility. So the cooling water system is a utility. It can be also steam used for dry the polypropylene or the nitrogen used to purge the lines for removing the flammable fluids. So depending on the size of the industrial facility, it's easier for the company to split what is process, main process, and put that into the piping instrumentation diagram and get the utilities and add to another drawing that in fact is a piping instrumentation diagram. When you have big facilities or big refineries, most often the personnel are responsible for the utilities or uh, the manager responsible for the utilities are different from the personal and manage management responsible for the main process. So in this way, makes sense to split the pipe instrumentation diagram into pipe instrumentation diagram for the main process and the piping instrumentation diagram for utility and name that as utility flow diagram. But in terms of content, it's the same in the utility flow diagram. You have pipe sizing, instrumentation, equipment, everything that are needed to build or to erect the utility process. So in a strict point, there is no changes, there is no differences between the pipe instrumentation diagram and in the utility flow diagram. It's only a matter of nomenclature. And now let's discuss about can the pipe instrumentation diagram be used for the erection of an industrial plant and understand the erection of an industrial plant as the construction, the installation of the, the pipes, the installation of tubes, the installation of the equipment, instrumentation, and etc. So in my point of view, the pipe instrumentation diagram is, cannot be used for the plant erection. To the plant erection, the constructors must use other documentation than the piping instrumentation diagram. Because if you need to install a pump in the field, you have coordinates for that. And the piping instrumentation diagram is not a document with coordinates. You need to install pipelines in your industrial plant and in the pipe instrumentation diagram, you will not have all the fittings necessary to do the installation of a pipeline because you have two straight tubes, you have curves, you have weldings, you have flanges, and these are kinds of details that are not shown in the pipe instrumentation diagram, but in other documentation like isometrics, plot plan, and etc. So, uh, in my earlier years in my career, I started in a revamp for a polypropylene plant here in Brazil. And I have seen people not familiar with the pipe instrumentation diagram taking this document and try to match the vision of the equipment in the field with the drawing that was in the paper. That's not the way that the pipe instrumentation diagram should be used. In any case, the pipe instrumentation diagram as a representation of the industrial facility or the industrial plant can be used for verification about the process and if all the main components to the process are installed, like uh, pipes, manual valves, control valves, 
safety relief devices, and etc. So don't do this mistake of thinking that the pipe instrumentation diagram can be used to do the plant erection. It can be used for the verification and most important, it is the basis for a set of other documentation to do the plant erection. If you are with me up to this point and this content is make sense for you, get this chance to subscribe to my channel and also to share this video with as many people as possible to help me to achieve the goal of 100,000 chemical process engineers on my YouTube channel. Returning to the question, process or piping and instrumentation diagram. If the PNID was supposed to be a process and instrumentation diagram, we could add information related to the heat and material balance because the main purpose of a process flow diagram is to show the process and the heat and material balance associated with that. A PFD without a heat and material balance is not of much help. But in the piping instrumentation diagram, we are not supposed and you should not add any information related to the heat and material balance because that's not the objective of this document. In any case, depending on the procedures and guidelines of the company where you work on, the, in the piping instrumentation diagram, you can have as much information as possible related to the equipment. So you can find, for instance, for vessels and tanks, information related to the diameter, to the, to the length seam to seam, or for pumps, you can have information of flow, head and shoot off or in the heat exchanges you will find information related to the heat transfer and etc but that are included in the pipe instrumentation diagram not because you are adding the heat and material balance to the document but to show some characteristics of the equipment that are being installed so take attention to that i have seen my career some pipe instrumentation diagram with information related to process like flow, temperature, pressure, and, but don't do that and I will tell you a reason for that. Every time that you add a information to engineering document, it must be consistent with other docu documents, engineering documents. And the source of the heat and material balance uh, most often is the process flow diagram we including the heat and material balance on that or a specific document for the heat and material balance. And any change, any update in the heat and material balance, if you add the information to the pipe instrumentation diagram, you will need to update the piping and instrumentation diagram that are not supposed to have that kind of information. So when you are doing plan design, it's very interesting that you don't replicate the same information to too many documents because every time that the source changes, you will need to update a series of documentation. Talking about replication, you must know that you must not replicate information or equipment, fittings, and etc in different sheets of the PNID. What I mean by that? For instance, let's suppose that you need to add to your drawing a uh, isolation valve at the suction of your compressor and you identify that as V100. And you have a dedicated drawing or a dedicated sheet to represent your compressor. And at the inlet of the compressor, you add the isolation valve V100. It's and you will have uh, V100. In the sheet of the compressor, you will have the V100 in a better limit sheet, for instance, and that is not right. You must not do this kind of error 
you must not replicate the same object in different sheets of your piping and instrumentation diagram. When I start my career in this propylene uh, plant revamp, I, it was my first job and I was in a design company and I was the only chemical process engineer in this company. And because of the working load of the project, I verified that the CAD designer was too busy to update my drawings because he was much more worried about the isometries and plot plan and etc. So to increase my employability in this project, I identified that would be interesting to my career to learn how to do the drawing of the pipe instrumentation diagram using softwares. The most known in the industry, at least by my knowledge, is the AutoCAD. Currently, you can use the AutoCAD Plan 3D that deals not only with the pen ID in 2D, but can also uh, uh, represent the plant in 3D mode and you can connect uh, the pipe instrumentation diagram with the isometrics and uh, let your life easier if you know how to use the tools. In the 2000s, I have read a lot about the micro station from Bentley. Right now, I don't hear too much about the software. And there are other software, intelligent software to build pipe instrumentation diagram like Comus and also the smart plant. The main advantage of all of these or uh, most of the software is that you can build a data bank and based on the data bank, you have administrator and you can extract many lists and information from straight from the pipe instrumentation diagram instead of uh, having uh, Excel spreadsheets to list all the lines that you have in the, the project or all the instrumentations that you have in the project or all the process safety devices that you have in the project. So in my point of view, one side skill very useful for the chemical process engineer is to learn how to, to draw the pipe instrumentation diagram using softwares. I would start with the AutoCAD, but if you have access to others, I also recommend that because depending on the size of the company, if you are talking about a medium to small company, in fact, you will be responsible to do everything since the drawing up to the installation of the components in the field. Uh, you At least you will do a lot of support on that. When the company gets bigger, it, they have CAD designers, they have dedicated people to do that. But in any case, if you are a chemical process engineer, it is your duty to know at least how to draw a pipe instrumentation diagram by hand using uh, pencil and paper. So to, to increase your employability, I believe that is worth it to expend some energy and time to learn any software dedicated to the drawing of the PNID. So guys, this is it. We have covered at least five topics here, and I strongly believe that you are a little bit more skilled in chemical process engineering and plant design than you was before. So if you want to keep improving your knowledge and expertise in chemical process engineering plan design and learn everything that must know to work on it, keep with my YouTube channel and subscribe to my all social media available at jeffersoncosta.com.